Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's August 31st. These are your headlines. First up, we're hearing about Albies moving into pretty much all of Rhode Island at this point. We also heard about striped bass to 57 pounds out of Block Island this week and bluefish to 20 pounds out in the race. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple news items to throw you away, and the first one comes to us from Crafty One Customs, and it has to do with the Rhode Island Tog Classic. Um, as of today, August 31st, this is your last day to get the early entry uh, discount. So you're going to want to go to CraftyOneCustoms.com, and you're going to want to go ahead and go through the registry process, and then you're going to use the promo code AUGUSTENTRY, and that will give you 25% off on your entry fee. It's 100 bucks to enter, but... Today, until midnight, you can do it for 75 So uh, definitely a worthy, you know, worthy of you to get in there and do it today so you can save you $25. And if you don't know about the Rhode Island Tog Classic, it is a charity event. Um, it's a one-day Tog tournament, and it's a huge thing. Um, I've been part of it the last two years, and, I mean, it just blows me away every time. So many people enter this thing. Uh, we had people come up from Georgia to, uh, to enter this thing last year. Um, and there's lots of different divisions, so you can be shore, kayak, boat, there's a team division, and there are several Calcuttas, so there's lots of different ways to win. In addition to that, there is an absolutely massive raffle. It's one of the biggest raffles I've ever seen. Um, and it's not just fishing stuff, it's all kinds of stuff. Um, there's home goods, there's spa treatments and massages, and I know this year they have a uh, mini split and condenser that you can have installed in your house, all free of charge if you win that item um, in, the, in the raffle. So it's just, I mean, it's an amazing event. It benefits great charities, and it's a whole ton of fun. So I highly recommend going and checking it out again. Right now it's at CraftyOneCustoms.com. You can go, you can buy your entry there, and you can enter, again, August entry for your promo code, and you'll get 25% off. Next up, we have a little rundown of what's going on in the Dreamboat Challenge this week. Big changes came this week with just three fish hitting the board. The first was a 2.5 pound porgy weighed in by Michael Rosenberg of Comac, New York, landing him in fourth place for the category. Next, we had Amagansett, New York, Sam Doherty, who upgraded his fifth place fluke with a 11.92 pounder that was good enough for third place. Lastly, we have the 2023 Dreamboat's first angler to place in all four categories simultaneously. That's Kyle Krause of Kutchog, New York, who entered a 15.12 pound bluefish, landing him in fifth place for the Gator category and knocking out Luke Citarelli off the leaderboard, taking the third place overall. The top three looks like this. Bob Cifarelli is still sitting pretty in first place with 24 points. Eddie Terrabiel holds steady in second place with 18 points. And Kyle Kraus is our new third place angler with 16 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21-foot Steigocraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And lastly, we have the giveaway, which is ongoing, and uh, seeing a lot of entries now. They're really starting to pour in. In fact, um, regular contributor to this thing, Tom Hood, is really making a play for this thing. He is entering fish at a rate that I almost can't even believe. The guy must be fishing 12 hours a day every single day. Um, so you're definitely going to have to compete with him just in sheer numbers alone. Um, but if you don't know how this whole thing works, it's quite simple. You just send your photos to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or you can text them to the number on the screen. And if you elect to email them, just put contest or giveaway in the subject line so I know what it's for and it makes it easier for me to sort them out later. And then basically it's just a, you're basically just trying to impress me. Um, I'm going to pick my favorite photo and whoever takes that photo um, on the Wednesday before uh, Halloween, so you still got a long time to enter this thing. I'm going to pick my favorite photo and you're going to get, a, whoever that is, is going to get a big prize pack from Missouri. Uh, 
a lot of fun. Gets me lots of photos. Get might get you in the magazine. Might get you on the reports here, and um, and you might win something too. So uh, you know, get those photos into me, and we'll see who wins. <laughs>
big school of pogies that moved into Boston Harbor and it brought with it a ton of big bass and a smaller percentage of really big bluefish. The bite lasted for a couple days and then the pogie boats went out there and decimated the school and broke up uh, you know, what little was left. So the bite has ended, however there are still these small pods of bunker now kind of roaming around the bay and if you can find them uh, you've got a good chance of finding some big stripers or maybe some giant bluefish. So that's uh, that's something to keep an eye on, and also, you know, if you spend a lot of time fishing in that area, uh, just always keep, obviously, but, I mean, keep your eyes open for bunker, because if they start to move in, it sounds like these fish just jump right on them and just start clobbering them. So, uh, definitely a cool thing going on up there in Boston. Also, for the guys heading offshore from that area, I have been hearing really good tuna reports from, like, the north end of Stellwagen and up toward Jeffrey's Ledge. Um, a lot of wreck size fish out there right now, and with giant season opening tomorrow, uh, the, the word is there are a lot of giants out there. So, I mean, we got some hurricane swell to deal with coming up these next few days, uh, which is probably going to keep a few people tied up, but uh, it's not like there's a lot of fish out there. So, uh, once things settle down a little bit, the fish is probably going to be pretty hot. Uh, so, that's something you may want to check out. Moving back in closer to shore, down to the Plymouth Situate area, a lot of big bluefish still out there. They're, these fish are deep. They're, they're hanging on deep ledges. Guys are getting them deep trolling. Uh, that seems to be the best way uh, for these guys to hook up. I'm sure some guys are getting them chunking, and I'm sure if you can find the right school of bait, you might pull a few of these big fish off of there. But a lot of teen-sized blues in that area right now, and that's uh, it's got a lot of people excited. So definitely want to check that out. Heading up along the uh, bay side of the Cape, we're hearing more and more striper action coming from the estuaries out there now. I haven't heard anything really big, you know, we're talking mostly schoolie sized fish, maybe a slot here and there. Uh, there's a lot of bait, and um, there's decent numbers of bass now kind of congregating around these river mouths, which is, you know, typical for this time of the year, but definitely cool to see. The better bass fishing is definitely out around the front on the outer beaches. Um, a lot of surf guys are hooking up now. It was mostly Coast Guard and Osset for a couple, for over a week. Now it seems to be spreading out a little bit. I've heard about some fish from like Nosset Light and Marconi now. So things are starting to spread out. We're starting to see more action, kind of like a, you know, a second encore here for uh, what was happening all summer. I uh, haven't heard of anything too gigantic, but lots of solid fish, lots of slot fish, lots of fish up into the high 30 inch range and lots of top water action at first and last light. So exciting fishing going on out in the outer beaches right now. Boat guys seem to really be concentrating on Monomoy. Um, there's just, I mean, really Monomoy and then all the rips that kind of come off of Monomoy with all those shoals and really all the way out to Nantucket. Uh, you can kind of pull off like the, you know, like a Swamp Yankee Grand Slam out there. You've got Stripers out there, you've got Albies, you've got Bonito, you've got Fluke. Um, so, a lot of fishing going on in that area. And, um, haven't heard about any like really big stripers in, in the last week, but still lots of solid fish out there from like 30 to 40 inches and, uh, and really good top water action as well. Moving into Nantucket Sound is where like the, where the biggest concentration of Albies is from Massachusetts right now. Um, sounds like it's been good days and bad days. A lot of small bait, like a little snot bait out there, which is making them tough to target on some days and then other days for whatever reason they just all get the message at the same time and just crush anything. Uh, but the east side of the vineyard's been really good, and then, you know, from Katuit all the way out to Nobska has been pretty consistent for the most part, you know, except on those off days. And then there's been pretty good numbers of fish up and around the Elizabeth Islands as well. So, uh, a lot of opportunity to catch albies right now. Bass fishing from the north side of the vineyard over to the Elizabeth Islands has been good. Uh, seems like a new push of fish came in there, some decent sized fish in there. Uh, surf fishermen are doing well at night, and um, definitely hearing about some good fish on top water, and uh, you know fishing deep with soft plastics off the boats in the in the same general area. So good bass fishing in there, popping through the islands into Buzzards Bay. We're finally hearing about Albies now pushing through the islands. Um, I talked to Captain Sebastian from Fish Link Charters, and he said that they were starting to see Albies moving up toward the canal. Um, which is really good news, and you know, before long, you know, canal bees will again be a thing. So, um, if you're a canal guy, or if you're just an albie guy, and you want to really challenge yourself, you may want to head up to the canal. Maybe next week, maybe those fish are going to push in. There's plenty of bait there, so uh, you know, things could things could get crazy. For a little bit more on what's going on in the canal this week, let's toss it over now to East End Eddie. Good morning, Dave. It's a beautiful morning here in the Cape Cod Canal. 
The only way it could be better is if there were fish breaking behind me and the sea's tide. Uh, I've been away from the canal for a few days. I, my wife, Jade O, and I attended a great wedding in Salem. The uh, Buck the Fudge wedding was terrific, a lot of fun. And uh, But, you know, you're away from the uh, canal for a few days and uh, you start to uh, feel withdrawal symptoms. So but when I came back this morning after my first cast, my... Uh, my arms start to feel uh, more normal again, so I'm back in the swing of things. So uh, things have been a little bit slow on the canal, uh, but uh, hopefully this, this week's uh, full moon will uh, change that. Uh, this, this full moon is a uh, super moon. It's actually closer to Earth by a little bit than the last one at the beginning of the month, so it should be a bright uh, full super moon, and hopefully that'll do the trick. And uh, so I... Uh, have, uh, I'm usually um, relying on uh, fishing information from uh, the boys of summer, but two out of three of them are uh, out of commission this week. Uh, Bill on the Grill Produce uh, is under under the weather, and uh, Polly the Painter Gravina has a bad back that he's hoping gets better and he can avoid surgery. So we miss those guys. Uh, the fish don't miss them, but we do, so get well soon, guys. Um, Andrew uh, Kaznaros caught uh, two dozen fish, though, on the mid-canal, mid uh, up to 35 inches. He was bouncing a Green Max Savage off the bottom, so congratulations to him. Um, I was uh, fishing next to a guy the other day, a young guy. Of course, in my world, a young guy's under 40. But uh, he was throwing a white uh, canal killer, Bill Hurley canal killer. I recognize that immediately because that's my favorite jig. And uh, he reeled in what looked like about a 34-inch striper. So I went over to talk to him, and um, nice guy. And I, I was talking to him, and I, I said, would you mind if I report this in my canal report? And, he, you know, I, I had already gotten his name. And geez, all of a sudden, he looked at me with fear in his eyes. He said, no, no, please don't do that. He says, I'm supposed to be at work today. <laughs> so, so, you know, he won't be the last guy to uh, call in sick to make it to the canal. So your secret is safe with me, pal. You're all set. Um, so uh, the uh, uh, news on the canal uh, f from uh, Governor Healy is that she's going to try to get the bridges replaced one at a time. Uh, I, I think she regards that as a less onerous task to get one done and, instead of asking the feds for money for both of them. And so she's going to start with the, uh, the uh, Sagamore Bridge. And the reason for that is because the Sagamore Bridge, I, I didn't know this, but the Sagamore Bridge actually is bigger, uh, busier than the Bourne Bridge. There's about an average of 17,000 more cars go over the Sagamore every day than, than the Bourne. So uh, hopefully that gets done uh, sometime before we meet St. Peter because uh, you can hear some funny noises when you're riding your bike under that bridge. Um, and so uh, my, uh, my tip of the week is, you know, sometimes I see guys coming on the canal with uh, sand spikes. You don't need a sand spike in the canal. Leave those in your truck. Um, you know, there's a million cracks in between the rocks on the canal. And I just take the rod of my, my the, the, the butt end of my uh, rod, and I, I just put it in the cracks and, you know, try to put it at like a 45 degree angle. And then you can put your leader on there and your, and your lure. And, um, and it, it's also great if you want to take a, you want to put your rod somewhere safe while you're taking a hook out of a, a fish's mouth. So, um, just leave, you know, you have enough equipment already in the canal, so leave your sand spikes and you at home and use them, uh, use them in, on the beach. So, so until next time, catch a big one. And heading out west we're to the, uh, you know, to the Rhode Island border, pretty much. We're talking to Jason Colby, he said the Westport River is starting to see a lot more striped bass. Most of these fish are under slot or just right around the slot, but good action up in there. Lots of big scup in the river still. I mean, he said it was so many, it was almost ridiculous. And then outside the river, sea bass fishing has been good, and he said the tog fishing has been surprisingly awesome. Uh, the best he's seen in a while for this time of the year. So uh, the inshore tog fishing, you know, late summer tog fishing is really on fire this year, and um, definitely worth trying if, uh, if you're a tog guy. And that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Jumping over into Rhode Island, let's start offshore. Um, I don't have a lot of specifics as, as to exactly where all this is taking place, but I keep hearing from numerous people that there are bluefin and yellowfin not far south of Block Island, not far south of Montauk. So um, 
you know, the best I could get was within sight of the windmills, which is close, you know, which is pretty close. So that's exciting. A lot of guys are out there and, you know, making the best of it. However, this storm coming through is going to mix things up a little bit and who knows where all that's going to end up. Uh, the other thing that's happening out there right now is the high flyers and any floating debris you can find, there's a lot of mahi around right now, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, so offshore guys have been getting you know, a pretty nice mixed bag out there when they have the weather to get out. Coming up closer to shore, let's uh, take a quick stop and check in with TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Nice to be back. Got another report for you from the uh, East Bay side of uh, Narragansett Bay and a little bit of Mahope Bay up in the Sakonet. Uh, things are actually really good right now. There's a lot of bait out there, and there's a lot of blue, hungry bluefish and some stripers chasing all of that bait around the bay. Uh, starting uh, around Spar Island into the mouth of the Kikamute River, uh, I actually had an opportunity to get out there and it was lights out, big, big bluefish. We had bluefish to 15 pounds uh, right at the mouth of the Kikamute. I uh, was able to fish up into the Sakonet. I didn't go up too, too far. Uh, it was a little windy and rough. So we did some ground fishing and uh, that didn't pan out too, too well. We got a, a couple of nice, nice scup um, and some sea bass and a, a couple of short fluke. Uh, but all in all, that was a good trip out there. Uh, and we definitely capped it back off again, uh, catching some big monster bluefish. And they're all spitting out peanut bunker. So we know there's lots of peanut bunker in the bay. Um, we all know the pelagics here now. We, I mean, I'm seeing tons and tons of report. Uh, I actually got a picture from my buddy, uh, Tyler Richmond. And uh, he's a kayak warrior out there. Uh, he's been fishing the uh, the reef out in Brenton Reef and out front of Sutch's Point and doing well with Benita, doing well with Albies. They're here. Uh, Jeff Sullivan doing well with the uh, Albies out front also. So uh, I'm seeing lots of reports. Uh, so we do know they're here. Just waiting for them to get inside of the bay. Um, you know, typical places would be east side of Prudence Island. Uh, along that rocky structure there, uh, along Jamestown. Uh, a lot of good spots to uh, be on the watch out for them moving into the bay. Uh, getting into the Warren and Barrington Rivers. Um, shore fishing has been unbelievable from the bridge and from the uh, current side underneath the bridges. There's lots of bluefish in there and there are some keeper to overslot striped bass in the rivers right now. So if you have an opportunity to get out and do that, uh, please get out there. I fished at 10 o'clock in the morning and I was catching uh, keeper stripers inside the Barrington River on Saturday morning. So uh, they're not going anywhere. Uh, the water's just gonna keep getting cooler and cooler and cooler. So we have a full moon coming up. So. Uh, it should intensify things and along with a hurricane moving up should give us a good push of pelagic fish uh, to move into our area. So uh, I got one other side note is uh, if you plan on fishing the Rhode Island Todd Classic, uh, you have to the 31st to get your 25% off early entry. So that's August 31st is the last day you can get your 25% off. And Dave, I wasn't sure if you were going to touch on that or not. But if you didn't, I did, uh, and that tournament's coming up soon in October. So uh, sign up, it's a really good tournament. Uh, so that's all we got for, uh, for you this week, and uh, I just think things are going to get better and better. So uh, we'll catch you uh, next week. Tight lines. Heading over toward Newport now. Uh, definitely hearing about a lot of bait exiting the bay right now, and what's happening there is it's attracting a lot of fish. So you've got Albies moving in. Uh, all around Aquidneck Island, you've got Albies moving in off of uh, Point Judith and at the West Wall. So all this bait coming out of all these estuaries is drawing in a lot of Albies. There's been a surprising number of Bonito around, and mixing in with all these funny fish have been some really nice striped bass, especially around Newport. I've uh, seen some fish caught on Albie snacks that were well into the 30-pound class. So you got some big stripers mixing in with the Albies makes for a really exciting... Uh, day of fishing and uh, a lot of that is happening you know within a mile or two of Brenton Reef so that's kind of the epicenter for the eastern half of Rhode Island's algae fishery right at the moment. 
course, that's going to change with the storm and as more and more fish move in. But uh, that's definitely a place that you can put some concentration on over the next few days. For a little more on that and some of the other things happening in the Newport area, let's toss it over now to Coral Aiello from Sarah Star Charters. We are rounding out the end of the summer here and looking forward to the fall run. Um, it's definitely starting already. Uh, the water temperatures have cooled off significantly uh, in the last couple weeks. They're around 68, 67 degrees. This is the time of year when we start to get all those bait balls coming back in. Um, you know, the funny fish come in, um, albies, you know, uh, stripers, bluefish, all of that starts to blitz again on this bait. Lots of peanut bunker around. I'm seeing them on my sonar when I'm out front. There's just huge balls of them. And for the last couple weeks, there wasn't much on them. But the last few days, fish have started to form and follow the bait around. And now you're seeing a bunch of blitzes. Uh, you can easily catch them with small epoxies uh, or some top water lures. Um, this is a really fun time of year because you can pretty much pull anything and that's really what's fun about it. You never know what's going to be going on in a blitz. You can have a blitz of stripers and blues and then you know, next thing you know you'll see uh, some albies show up. Um, yesterday or a few days ago I saw some right outside Newport Harbor and then a couple days prior to that they were right in front of my boat in the harbor. So this is a really fun time of year for fishermen. A lot of people look forward to it. Um, you can still get the big bass out front, but they have been hunkering down to the structure these last few weeks. And I'm not sure if it's from the east wind, all this east wind that we've been getting, um, but they are really hunkering down and the eels have really been the ticket on catching these big bass right now. Um, other than that, you can catch tons of blues. They have showed up in force these last couple of days out of Newport um, and they're, you know, gators, you know, it's hard. It's, some people are always looking for those smaller uh, bluefish for used for bloop and tuna bait because this is the time of year that those big bluefin uh, end up coming in pretty close. Um, but a lot of these bluefish are like huge. Um, you know, we got one the other day that was, you know, 37 inches and 20 pounds. The girth was 19 inches. I mean, these are like extremely large bluefish, super fun to catch on light tackle. Um, the sea bass bite is still pretty strong and it will continue to be strong up until October. Um, you know, a lot of people are already looking forward to doing ground fishing for tog, uh, which I have already started and it has been um, actually surprisingly good. Um, I usually catch them this time of year, um, but I started two weeks ago and I was pleasantly surprised uh, to catch some really nice big ones. I caught a 10 pounder uh, the first day I went out to try it in my dinghy um, and they were in 40 feet. So they are starting to show up in the more shallow waters coming in close. Um, so that will be in full, uh, full swing pretty soon here. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, the fall run. It seems like it's off uh, to a really good start. I already mentioned that the albies have moved in off the west wall over the last few days, so that is that fishery is firing off now. Heading out to Block Island, there's been a lot of albies around the block, which isn't always the case, but it seems like a lot of albies this year. Um, and you know, I know we talked about it last week, but that state record has got to be hanging heavy on anyone's mind that's fishing out there because there's got to be some big albies out there. In addition to those albies, though, there have been some really big stripers. And we're not only talking about out on the ledge right now. These fish are up along the island. They're relating to a structure in like 15 to 35 feet of water. Uh, I've seen multiple fish over 50 this week, including a 57-pounder. Um, so, you know, the, the big bass bite that was, you know, it was a little slower there for a week or two, it has come roaring back on out of Block Island, and uh, things are looking good. For a little bit more on what's going on around Block, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. I don't have a whole lot to report this week. Um, we've done sea bass trips, blackfish trips, the sea bass, at least the sea bass up on the beach, um, the size is, is changing. You gotta, it, it's a lot of putbacks for keepers, so that ratio is getting almost too difficult to work on. So the, the, the bigger sea bass are starting to move a little bit. The big fluke are definitely going deeper. Um, I'm not seeing much on the surface. Had a little bit of action the other day while we were black fishing. Saw some albies come by the boat, didn't try for them. Um, anyway, we got a big ground swell today and tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. We'll see what that does. And uh, anyway, I'll get back to you. Have a good week. Moving over into the fluke front here, um, this, is a, this is a good time of year for fluke fishing. Now, fluking usually starts to wrap up toward the end of September, so you want to make it happen. 
But we've got a lot of bait coming out of the estuaries right now. We've got big peanut bunker, we've got small peanut bunker, we're going to have some mullet here at some point, and we have snapper bluefish. All of these things are on the short list of favorites for fluke. Um, and what can happen is it can concentrate these fish into more targetable areas. So like the passages that come out of Narragansett Bay are going to start seeing more fluke action. And outside the breachways as well, you're going to start to see more of these fluke concentrating into smaller areas, which is going to make them easier to target. Um, we're hearing about good fluke action right now. Um, most of the fish are short, but you know the guys that don't mind weeding through them are finding some nice fish and definitely able to pull limits. Um, so fishing's been good out that way, and we're hearing about good striped bass in the breachways as well. For a little more on that and some of the other things happening in the western half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to Declan O'Donnell from Breachway Bait and Tackle. Uh, fishing's been great here. Uh, this pre-storm bite has been pretty good. Uh, Albie showed up on the south shore here on Sunday. Uh, and there's good numbers of them. I got a chance to get out Monday night. We ran into schools of hundreds of them all jumping in unison. Uh, got onto a bunch of fish that night. Uh, ponds loaded up with bait and stripers. Um, some of the bigger bait that's in there right now is snappers and peanut bunker. There's also a bunch of rain bait and silver sides on top of that. Uh, bite's been great on the incoming back in the pond for stripers. And uh, the breachway bite at night on the outgoing is starting to pick up. Um, this storm and full moon is, is given uh, a lot of tide movement. So that's creating f stripers to uh, get on the hunt and uh, start finding this bait. Uh, it's looking like a pretty good weekend coming up. I think a lot of our customers are going to try to get out and do some black fishing. Uh, we got plenty of crab, so feel free to come in and get stocked up. Moving over into Connecticut, uh, you know, we had the, the greatest bluefish tournament on earth over the weekend, and the winning fish was over 20 pounds, and all indications point to that fish being taken in the race. In fact, I'm 99.92% sure that it was. Um, and there were several other big fish taken in the race that made it into the tournament as well, between 12 and 15 pounds. So it's pretty easy to say that there are some really big bluefish out in the race right now. Uh, bass fishing in the race has been good, but not great. As far as what I've been hearing, there's been you know, good numbers of smaller fish. The bigger fish are behind the island, out around fishers, uh, up in the rocks. And the problem that you're going to run into there is there's a lot of sharks in that area. So... Uh, a lot of fish are getting bitten in half out there, so uh, you know, something to keep in mind if you're going to go up there and sling eels or throw plastics up against the rocks. Um, you want to get those fish in the boat quick. Uh, heading back towards shore now, we're hearing more fluke action um, along the eastern half of the sound over these last five to seven days. Uh, probably has something to do with more bait exiting the rivers there as well. Um, so from like Goshen, over to Black Point, Hatchets, and then all the way out to, you know, the, uh, the Sand Shoal off the mouth of the river. We're hearing more and more fluke action and more and more keeper-sized fish. So it just seems like either a lot of bait has moved out and drawn in some more fish or just a new push of fluke moved in for whatever reason. But in, in any case, uh, fluking has been better in the eastern half of the Sound over the last week or so than it has been pretty much all year. So that's something that you can uh, hang your hat on there. Getting up closer to the Connecticut River, I know the bass fishing has been getting better and better in that region. We're starting to see some much nicer fish there. Uh, for a little more on that, let's toss it over now to Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey guys, for this week's Fisher Report, we are getting into September now. So end of summer fishing, still a lot of big stripers around taking live bait. But really, the big change is... Uh, we're getting into the beginning of the fall run, which is real exciting. Over the next two months, we should have really great fishing and a, a wide variety of fish. Um, so what we're just beginning to see is surface blitzes, and you can expect them to become more and more consistent over the next couple of weeks. I expect to see more and more surface blitzes. There's a lot of small bait around. We've seen a really wide variety of bait. I mean, squid juvenile butterfish, even uh, tinker mackerel, which is pretty neat. Um, still adult bunker. I'm hearing about peanut bunker. We really want the peanut bunkers because that's what gets everything fired up. Um, a lot of big bluefish around. We were uh, getting big blues today, diamond jigging them. Um, so plenty of those big bluefish around. Um, 
The black sea bass fishing is also good, which is typical in the fall. You usually get really good black sea bass fishing. So um, fall run fishing is starting. Stripers, bluefish, sea bass, and uh, here are some rumors about some bonita and potentially some albies further east. So expect to, well, I should say expect, but the possibility to encounter those uh, coming up really soon. So um, be on the lookout and good luck. And then I was watching uh, Rowan's Instagram this week. I know he did a lot of different things this week. I know we got some weak fish. I know we had some chub max. I know uh, he had some nice stripers on the fly. So uh, I don't know. Who knows what he's going to talk about in this video. But let's toss it over him, to him now. Here's Rowan Lytle. Hey, everybody. Uh, so we're kind of in a more stable position as far as the water levels go now. Uh, we've got a little bit of rain uh, overnight. The Connecticut River is kind of stabilized. It's still high for this time of year. The water temperature is cooling down significantly. Uh, that's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it will demand some more finesse presentations. But some of the species, like pike, are really going to get going. Um, the pike fishing hasn't been great in the Connecticut River for a, a number of years now, but it's during these little spikes that you got an opportunity to maybe catch some of those bigger pike that still are in the system. Um, it's definitely a good time to get out and fish. Uh, there's not a lot of debris floating down the river. The water's clearing up, uh, and it's looking better than it has been most of the summer. Uh, so get out there, get after it, and good luck. Now heading west out of the river, we're going to just take a quick stop in Westbrook. We're going to check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Still some uh, kind of transitional summer into fall fishing right now. Um, some pretty good stripers out there still. There's still 40 inch plus fish hanging around. Um, they're gonna get a little bit more picky about when they're eating um, as we kind of get into fall, but they are still around. Uh, what you're most likely gonna see uh, is an increasing number of slot fish um, and also kind of like schoolie sized bass as well, blitzing on the surface. Uh, that bait is going to start pushing out pretty heavily here as we hit the uh, beginning of September, middle of September. Um, and that's what's going to fuel those blitzes that we love to see kind of all the way through Halloween and, and maybe into November. Um, so between now and then, we're kind of transitioning. Um, water's going to start cooling as we get some cooler nights. Um, starting to see a couple leaves fall here and there already. It's pretty crazy. Um, but that's what you're going to see. A lot of top waters, little top water baits, little soft plastics, little metals. You can jig those vertically or cast them. They all work well. Um, sea bass, we've heard some better reports recently um, in a little shallower, which is great. We love to hear that. Um, fluke, we haven't heard much about fluke. Um, still pretty spotty. Not sure how many folks are still targeting them. We haven't heard as many folks coming through the shop targeting those guys. Um, still no albies in Connecticut waters quite yet, but they are creeping closer. Rhode Island has gotten them pretty good over the past five, six days. Um, so it's just a matter of time before we see them as well. So for now, enjoy that transitional stuff, big bass, small bass, everything in between. Um, and we'll keep an eye out for a fall run to kick up here in the next couple weeks. Good luck. Some of the best sea bassing we're hearing about in the sound right now is happening out toward, you know, Stratford Shoals or middle ground. Middle ground. Um, said, seems like it's east of the actual middle grounds and some of those deeper waters. Uh, guys are finding some hefty fish out there, pulling some nice limits out of that area. So that's definitely some place you can go if you want to grab some sea bass. Up closer to shore, we're hearing about a lot of bluefish still, all different sizes, been some really big ones in the mix also. Striper fishing in the western half of the sound has been a little slower. Um, I think water temps have finally kind of gotten up to that summer level out there, and it's slowed the bite down a little bit, but there's a lot of bait exiting those rivers as well, and you can expect to turn around really any time now. Uh, for a little more on that and some of the other things happening out in the western part of the sound, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Go fishing report. On these full moon tides, we see some really good diamond jigging bite going on at 11B and 28. <clears throat> 11B's definitely had the best diamond jigging bite on the outgoing. We've seen a lot of big bluefish, and we've weighed in a lot of bluefish for the past tournament. It was really fun, it was a really good time, and we have some great fishing going on. There's a lot of the bluefish from that 8 to 12 pound range, and that's always fun on diamond jigs. They're holding from like 60 to 100 feet on the tip of 11B. And on these big moon tides, they're coming in at night and feeding on all these peanut bunker and bunker in our harbor. So we've seen guys doing well chunking our harbor, chunking shallow around the islands, throwing poppers, spooks. And also we've seen some bass starting to get active too. They're starting to find these peanut bunker up in these back bays, these estuaries. In the early morning and sunset hours, they've been blitzing on them. So it's, this is a great time of year. It's shaping up to look like a good fall. The fluke can remain steady. It's not great. It hasn't been fantastic all year, but you really got to grind. So... 
we got a lot of small bait now and you know shallow and then and deep so you definitely got to bounce around a little places like 26 24 11 b the ob buoy and 28 c squid spearing you know snappers this time of year drifting them live is really good to find a good keeper fluke and then squid and bucktails obviously the sea bass bite remains consistent on our deep water wrecks and our deeper water structure. We just see these fish move shallow as our waters start to cool towards blackfish season. But right now, if you want to get your black sea bass limit, you know, locally, I would try Celtic wreck, the wrecks outside Kakini, the wreck south of the islands and that like 50 foot or more mark. High low rigs with squid, spearing, clams, and they'll take a variety of jigs like diamond jigs, butterfly jigs, you know, slow pitch jigs, you name it. The porgy bite remains strong. This time of year, we got bluefish and porgies. So porgies love the warm water. Guys are catching them from the beaches, our piers, and then on the boats, they're doing good on our shallow water reefs and our deep water reefs. Thanks and good luck. That's what I have for you guys, the reports this week. Hopefully they're gonna inspire you to get out there. I mean, the algae bite is on. It's gonna keep spreading out. It's gonna keep getting better. Uh, so if you've got algae fever, you've got plenty of options for ways to scratch that itch. A lot of big stripers around, whether you're fishing Maine, whether you're fishing around Boston, whether you're fishing Block Island, um, and even up close in Newport, mixing in with the Alves. A lot of big stripers around, and also there's still tons of big bluefish around. So, I mean, there's just so many different things that you can do right now. Great fluke fishing. Um, if you're not getting out there, man, you really, you really got to make, you got to make it happen. We got Labor Day weekend coming up. And, um, you know, there's really no excuse not to get out there. So get out there, take some pictures, send them in to me. Maybe you win something. And if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full taste of everything we offer. We cover all styles of fishing from Delaware all the way up to Maine, shore, paddleboard, kayak, offshore, everything in between. Um, you're going to get a good taste on the website, enough free stuff there to show you exactly what we're all about. If you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and give us, hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching and we'll see you next week.